So remember, um, optimization is about choosing a method that best achieves a goal, right? And so in this particular case, right, and choosing, we just talked about, that was testing. Now we're gonna talk about the method. And by method, we mean the means by which you're trying to achieve that goal. And so which means are we talking about? What methods are we talking about? What can you optimize? Well, you can optimize everything, right? You can optimize landing pages. You can optimize uh, the emails you send out. You can optimize the whole website, right? You can optimize display and search ads all to achieve some goal, say sign up for emails, make a purchase, return on investment, whatever it is, right? So those are all the different things you can optimize. Uh, so we're gonna talk about each of these in kind of in a little bit more detail because it's kind of interesting to think about these different options, right? So um, one great example of optimizing a landing page. So a landing page is the page you first see when you get to a website after being directed there, usually by a campaign of some sort, right? So one example of, of a, great, a great example where they did a lot of work on optimization of a landing page was the Obama presidential campaign in 2008. Now this was done by Optimizely, right? Now, um, they had, uh, they actually had more than just the four I'm showing here, but they had four different pieces of media plus more that they were thinking about putting up on that page, right? And they had four different ways to phrase the actual button that submitted information. What they were trying to optimize was the actual sign up. How many people can they get to actually type in their email and give them a zip code, right? Uh, and so in that, actually they had six different types of media, these three pictures here and this video, plus three other videos, right? That they were thinking about using to start up, right? Um, and I'll tell you that the one that wound up doing the best is one of the one examples I have up here. Um, I so. The question I have is just, you know, if you want to play a little game with yourself, is before I go on to the next slide, what combination of one of these types of four media and one of these four buttons do you think wound up getting them the highest um, number of signups, the highest percentage of signups that they saw? All right. So write down your answer real quick before I switch. So here is the final page that they wound up with, right? Um, it's a, it has the picture of Obama with his family, and they did this all through A-B testing, right? So they were looking at actually 24 combinations, and they were observing all the options, and this family, the family picture, with the button that said learn more, actually wound up being the one that got them the most signups. Now, what's interesting is that Optimizer, the staff that was working on the website before they ran this experiment, really, really thought that the video of Obama talking was gonna be the one that had the most uh, signups, right? But instead, it was this one of showing him with his family. Um, and so, um, the signup rate on the original page, by the way, which um, was about 11 point, oh, sorry, it was about 8.26%. This page wound up with a signup rate of 11.5%, which is a 40% improvement which might not seem like a huge amount that only went up 3%, but you gotta remember, with millions of people visiting, this, they expected that this was about 3 million more addresses, um, and doing their calculations for how much an address translates into dollar, they say that over the course of the campaign, that resulted, this, this change in the website resulted in 60 million more donations, right? And the key takeaways they had, remember, everything on the website presents an opportunity for you to optimize, right? And you should always question the assumptions about whether people think certain things are the best for it. Um, and you should experiment early and often, right? Because if you make this change, uh, you know, even a couple weeks earlier, in this particular case, that's millions more dollars in sign-ups, right? So, um, it's just an example, but of course you can check ever, change other things on landing pages. You can check change videos and images, design and color, forms and call to action. The number of pages, how long does it take to get you to sign up, right? Is it personalized? Do I know where you're coming from? Another example of the Obama's optimization is that when you click through through from Reddit to the Obama page, it would say, welcome Redditors, right? As opposed to other things that it might say when you read your So they were taking that into account. They were personalizing the content, right? So you can change all the copy. You can have different types of social sharing, you, and you can make sure you optimize for mobile as well. So that's, that's website and landing pages. What about email, right? So email also you can optimize in different ways. So you can optimize, for instance, the subject line of the email, right? You can try out different subject lines. 
using A-B testing. You can optimize how you personalize, right? And in this particular case, uh, HubSpot's case, it's actually giving them data about what they know about the consumer, right? And it can also, one thing that seems to affect a lot of, uh, of optimization here is who the email is actually from and really personalizing it rather than having it be from a corporate entity, right? So that really helps a lot. You can also optimize your display and search advertising. So in this particular case, you see Ad Espresso that actually sells Facebook ads and they actually did optimization on their own Facebook ads, right? And in this case, the content is exactly the same except for the image. And, and the, on the top one, right, you had um, you have like a cartoon character showing off how to get these Facebook ads. Now the bottom one, you have the Polaroid camera, I guess trying to inspire people uh, that, you know, there's all these creative ads out there. Um, you know, this one, the top one actually seems to be more pertinent to what they're doing. But in the end, they did a study and they found out that this top one cost them about $2.73 per conversion uh, per person who signed up. This one, which um, just has the Polaroid footer, was only a dollar and thirty cents per conversion, right? So a much lower rate, uh, cost them a lot less, saved them a dollar seventy per person signing up for the website. So you know you should also experiment with things like your social media, right? Content plan, the way you do your calls to action, the tone and personality. One one study that I've done in the past is looking at what's the optimal time per day to tweet uh, to gain the most uh, to gain the most retweets from your followers, right? And uh, we did this actually by building a model and studying the actual users and trying to predict when they're on. But you instead, you could just start tweeting at different times per day, right? And trying to make an, uh, and try and look at how often your content gets retweeted or shared as an estimate of how, um, what time per day is the best time for you to look at. Uh, you can also optimize something like digital, the digital commerce aspect. So you can optimize the layout of your product pages. Um, credibility, you know, you can optimize like how many reviews you have or how much information you have. You can optimize the checkout process by having a fewer number of steps or payment options and providing like security information to indicate that the content, the, the, the credit card numbers won't go away, right? Um, a great example of this uh, was in a, a story that we know, we, so we know the story. Um, this is a company called UIE, and a, a, one of the people from at Jared School wrote this great article about how um, they were working with a large uh, uh, retail brand, uh, and they were suffering from people just leaving things in their shopping carts all the time, right, as they were checking out. And one of the things that they did was they changed this button that said register, which was meant you had to register a new account before you could check out to continue, right? And so the continue button, uh, which um, wound up resulting in a lot less drop shopping carts, a lot less abandoned shopping carts, and they actually estimate that over the course of a year, it gained them about $300 million. So this, uh, so people have guessed that the actual retail website is Best Buy, we don't know for sure. Uh, but they, Best Buy does have text that looks very similar to what's described in the article. It says, you know, new customers don't have an account, no problem, you can check out as a guest. You have the option to create an account during checkout, right? So this is kind of what the button looks like now before they've made everybody register, right? So this is an example of kind of looking at your data. You could run an A-B experiment between continuous as a guest and register and find that continuous as guest works better. Purchases went up about 45% um, using this continue button as opposed to the other one, right? Um, and they actually, part of what motivated this was not only did they do a test of it, but they also did like a user study and they found out that most people didn't want to go to the website. Um, like the first time they went to the website, they weren't there to build a relationship with the company. They just wanted to buy one product. And when they couldn't do that, when they had to form a registration, it caused them a lot of angst and worry. And even returning users, right, had trouble remembering their login information. Um, so they they want they, they prefer the option of continuing as a guest. Right? So a lot of things can be done to tweak your websites to really improve it. And it's not until you do optimization and analytics that you can really understand how it's working out well. That being said, what kind of things should you be measuring, right? Well, one of the things you can be, 
what is the goal that you're optimizing? Well, the basic goal that you should be optimizing is essentially a KPI, a key progress indicator. You should identify a KPI that will allow you uh, to really kind of move towards the goal that you want to achieve with that digital marketing platform. And you should choose a KPI that's easy to measure. So for instance, in the Obama case, they were looking at email enrollments on a website. But it could just be click-throughs. How many people, when they see this, click through uh, to the underlying thing? So for ads, that's often what you're optimizing. It could be for overall website design, maybe it's bounce rate, right? You wanna know how to, you wanna minimize the number of people who come to your website and don't click on any links. And that's known as the bounce rate, right? And so you wanna keep that number as low as possible. So maybe you optimize the different types of content. Maybe for email, you're optimizing how many emails actually get opened as opposed to just deleted, right? And in social media, maybe you're looking at retweets and shares, and in e-commerce and digital commerce, you're looking at purchases. So now you have all the elements, let's talk about how you actually put that together to design an optimization and digital marketing analytics plan for your company.